The secret boogie woogie woo woo. What's woo woo, camera person? Um, some kind of a form of, 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 of transcendental meditation? <laughs> Nearly. Um, the secret boogie woogie woo woo. Now, for example, if we go back to the very first boogie woogie, which generally is Pine Top's boogie woogie in 1928, Pine Top Smith, and it's one of the first boogie woogies we learn, there is the famous. Uh, riff in the middle of it which comes up again and again in various boogie woogie improvisations come over to the right hand camera person I'm just going to put the chop in the left hand, but this is the essential riff which I think many of you know Don't put, do it too close camera person just to see if you can get the whole hand, but this is the basic thing I'm just going to play it simplified first You probably all know this The secret boogie woogie woo woo comes this. Instead of doing this, okay, which you can probably do, what I want you to do is this. Did you get the little woo woo bit in the middle? I did. The little do it twiddle. Again. Instead of doing, which is quite straight, or you can do it up an octave. The woo woo. It's a here. trill. Yeah, it's a trill. Yeah, but I'm just calling it a woo woo okay. for some reason. I don't know why. Right. Um, I think that the, the term woo woo has been just being bandied around recently. Camera person. Yeah. So it's kind of a trill, basically. You know, okay. T -t camera person's being very technical and left brain today, but okay, it's not a woo woo. It's a trill. All okay. right, fine. <laughs> so I'm doing. Then. Um, So instead of doing, I'm doing, you hear I'm getting that bit in. And then finish the dot shot. So I'm going to do it again and that really makes all the difference I think when you do that kind of pine tops riff and that comes up again and again in so many different variations that I want you to practice that and it's also very good for your right hand coordination so come in again camera person and what I want you to do is I want you to try it in various octaves you can do it down here first so just get it play it first of all play it straight and then I want you to do it with the triplet in the woo woo thing in it tricky to do it. If you try it, it's actually quite difficult to do it. It's kind of those notes. Again, it's these notes played quickly. That's the essence of it. But you kind of have to do it in the correct rhythm in context. Again, here it's the triplet bit, the woo woo bit. Up to the five chord. And, the, and then the triplet bit is, or the woo woo bit is. Get it? And, the, and that's kind of a variation on the Dr. John riff. Well, this was pre-Dr. John, so obviously Pine Top Smith came up with it first. Um, I'll do that again. So all together it would sound something like this, and what you might want to do is play it down here, and really probably it sounds slightly better up here. But I'll play it down here just so you can see it clearly. So here we go. I'll do it with the um, with the triplet thing in with the woo-woo bit. Just put the chop in the left hand.
Um, if you want to introduce that kind of phrase, this is a good introduction to it. Remember, we'll be talking about introducing your boogie woogie. You might want to do these kind of octaves, just playing octaves, all octaves. the triplet it does sound kind of straight I mean you can play it without the triplet you know <laughs> You don't have to do the triplet in all of them, you can just vary it so it doesn't repeat too much. You can, you can do it just straight there and then put it in there and then straight. So vary it again. One of the um, cautions that I would give you when you're using these techniques is not to overdo them because Part of the, I think, training of a really effective pianist, the boogie-woogie player, is to know when to not overdo it because anything that's overdone is going to turn into a bit of a cliché, I would say. I was going to say it's get burnt if it's overdone, wouldn't it? <laughs> like a chicken? Yeah. Okay, I, thank you Thank you for that uh, um, uh, contribution camera person. Yes, and you, you would know a lot about overdoing things. Wouldn't you? <laughs> um, various things have been burnt on a regular basis. Uh, what is that time you... you it's better than oven? giving people food poisoning. What about time you... What was it? You, you put the oven... The oven was on fire once? I did that once, yes. Yeah, the oven was on fire mm -hmm. I came in. But better to overcook things because at least you then don't get food poisoning. Yeah, you don't You don't get food poisoning. But, but that's the bright side. But then you basically have burnt offerings. Um, <laughs> black potatoes, which have definitely been done burnt. Well, you know what they say: if you don't like the cook, do your cooking yourself. I think that's a very, I think that is a very good, uh, a very good cop out camera person. Yes, but um, you know, if anything's overdone, you don't want it underdone. You want it overdone. So, uh, as with the same boogie woogie riffs, you know, when I teach you a riff, um, use it. It's like seasoning. You know, if you put too much salt on. It's too salty. If you don't have enough salt on, it's kind of a bit. It's a very profound statement, isn't it? it is you put too much salt on, it's too salty. Well done. Salt <laughs> yes, but it's a metaphor. Oh, this right. is a metaphor for boogie woogie playing camera person. Okay. As as an ex English teacher, I think you should understand no. about metaphors. <laughs> What's you know the difference between a metaphor and a simile? The emphasis is on the ex English teacher. Uh, of course, I know the difference. Yes, you miss being an English teacher. Don't oh, you? desperately. Yeah, I don't yes. think I can cope with that. Well, actually, I like the children. It's you, just the rest of it. I yeah, don't you like. love Austin. Children don't are you? great. Um, it's just everything else. Yes, yeah, just everything. The paper. You like paperwork. <clears throat> okay, we love paperwork, it's fantastic. I, mean, I think we need more it. bureaucracy. There's too much of it. You know what, if teachers just left alone to get on with it with the yes. children, that's yes. not a problem, it's okay, just the I rest of the nonsense the that you have to put up with. Yes. Up the revolution? Indeed. Okay. All right, so that's the secret woo-woo, and uh, this riff that I've played you in this lesson, it's, a, it's an extract from a riff, but, you know, it's, it comes up in so many boogie-woogies, you know, the... You know, and it's all the way from Pine Tops Boogie Woogie back in 1928, and it's probably the most important riff, I would say, in Pine Tops Boogie, because it comes up in so many... Whenever you hear, you know, great boogie-woogie pianists um, improvising, often that, that riff comes up, and that little triplet in the middle, the little woo-woo bit, is what I think really seasons it, which, which makes 
makes it different. So practice that riff over and over again, and you can try different left hands with it. I've just actually put the chop on the left hand. And of course, you can get the sheet music to Pine Tops Boogie Woogie on our website. We have a downloadable PDF of a brilliant note for note transcription of Pine Tops Boogie Woogie on our website. So I'm going to put up a little icon. Watch the end of this video and I'll put a little icon with a load of books on it. If you click on that icon, all those books are, are kind of images of the sheet music. Go, on, go to the website. You can print out a, a free sample of Swanee River Boogie and you can download um, Pine Tops Boogie and all the classic Boogie Woogie pieces on our website. So do check it out. I'll put the icon on. And also I'm going to put up a couple of videos uh, at the end of this video so you can see other stuff that we're doing on our channel. As always, press that like button, press that subscribe button, visit the Camera Person fan club page which I think has one uh, more like, I think, oh, since it, yesterday. Right, yeah. I, think I think loads of people have been supporting me. You're just deleting them, aren't you? Yeah, somebody started that. I think people are sending in things. In support. Did someone start a, a Facebook campaign about me or something? Yeah, it's a, a Twitter campaign. Oh, good for them. Be thank nice, you. Nice Who was it? I don't um I can't remember. Well, anyway, thank you to that person. Be nice to camera person. I'm going to look that up and find hashtag, out who they are and say thank you to them. Hashtag be nice to camera person. Is it? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find that person. I'm going to look them up and say thank you. Okay. Right. Um, Good for them. And, uh, and you've got Call one me. more like on your page I as well. I have, yes. Which that's is, which that's is, which is, wonderful. Which is, which is quite... And remember, don't overdo it, camera person. Don't overdo the techniques that I'm teaching you. You know, Use them in moderation. It's like, for example, if you teach a class of students how to use a semicolon, the next day you have like a hundred semicolons in an essay, whereas you know you only really want one. And it's the same with the triplets and all these little techniques. You want to use them in moderation. So whenever you get a technique from this channel, uh, use it sparingly and use it tastefully. Don't do it all over the place because otherwise um, it's going to be a bit overdone like camera person's potatoes. <laughs> um, and on that happy note, I will talk to you very, very soon. Soon.